Dr. Howard Sobel is a top-rated cosmetic dermatologist in New York. In fact, he happens to be my dermatologist. We talk about everything from what you should be doing for your daily skincare routine to insight on popular cosmetic procedures. Dr. Sobel also has his own line of skincare that you can find at drsobelskinrx.com or sephora.com. This is Just Be Unfluenced with Dr. Howard Sobel. Let's get into it. So Howard is a dermatologist, a high-profile dermatologist in New York City that has a lot of celebrity clients. Um, I, you know, you don't get enough credit for the fact that a lot of people do this now and you didn't invent it. And I'm not saying you're the only person that did it, but it definitely wasn't a common thing for dermatologists to inject Botox into a jaw to alleviate that masseter muscle building up and also the tension from grinding. And I know this because a lot of people now, when I talk about my teeth grinding, try to suggest that to me. And I'm like, hi, we invented that. When you inject the mass of the muscle here, this muscle, this muscle actually atrophies me like you don't use it very much. So a muscle will atrophy. When it atrophies, it has the effect of helping TMJ. Because what is TMJ? It's grinding your teeth and increasing that muscle where it's painful. The muscle is always in contraction. So you release it. And it builds up. And it it continuously build up because people don't even realize it in their sleep, they're grinding. And that's why a lot of people, dentists give people, you know, bite plates so they don't grind. But the side effect, you know, a lot of times in, in dermatology, and we'll talk about it, the side effect of things is how things were discovered. So by doing Botox in the mass of the muscle, in, in this area around the jawline, okay, it decreases the muscle buildup, the tension in the jawline. And it gives you a more heart-shaped face. And that's what you want. A female wants a heart-shaped face. A male wants a squared-off jaw. Interesting. That's very masculine. That's interesting. Well, the the funny thing is that mine for years, I had been told by dentists for years to get a night guard, which doesn't totally, by the way, you, you, sometimes you use it almost like a pacifier and that becomes like the new thing that you're biting on. If you're really like a professional, that's a hundred percent right. Yeah. Like me, it becomes like a, it becomes like a chew toy, like a chew toy for a dog, like you're teething. It's I'm really bad, but I've been doing it my whole life. And even young dentists were telling me to get a night guard and I just ignored it. And you do a lot of damage, but what I realized was that you're building it up like a bicep curl. Like people thought that I had a different face after I did that with you. But it's not something you do just the first day. It's something that you have to do in small increments. A, because it's a gradual thing. But B, you don't want to like dissolve your entire jaw where then it's like you don't have a jaw. Well, you have to be very, very careful on this because, and, and I've learned the lesson once or twice as well. But I see people come to me all the time. If someone's very excited, please get rid of the TMJ, do whatever I want. I want that perfect jawline. Right. And you do too much. And if you do too much and you atrophy that set of muscle, okay, too much, what happens? You have difficulty uh, biting down and oh, chewing wow. food. And also your smile may be crooked. You can wind huh. up with a smile like this. I don't know if you can see that. And yeah. I, I've seen that before. And it's very hard. Then you have to hit the other side and balance it out. So what you rather not do is have that problem. Just do a little at a time and then have them come back in a month, do it again, and just slowly decrease the muscle contraction so you don't have, don't get too much. That's the last thing in the world. You want someone to come back. My TMJ is better, but look at my smile, doctor. And I can't chew food and I'm drooling. You know, so right. you don't want that. Right. Well, all right. So you've been a dermatologist for how many years in, in that space in New York? Um, on the upper 35 East side? years. 35. Is that dating me? Yeah, I guess that's dating 35 you. years. Uh, that's dating you. Um, that's 35 years. And were you like, a, how long did it take you to become a hot shot? Like really like the guy. You, you know, hot, guy. Shots, hot shots then with different hot shots now. It's interesting. You know, um, sometimes when you're a little older, you become antiquated. Everything now is the internet. It's TikTok. It's, it's you know, Instagram. You know, when I started practice, I always had a cosmetic practice. But yet I always saw patients for their medical problems, their, their germ medical problems. Because you can't just do Botox and fillers or liposuction on someone. And then they come in for a rash and you say, I can't see it, go to someone else. So I always saw both. And I still do. There was a time that I saw patients, I saw uh, managed care as well as 
just paying patients without managed care. Now we don't see managed care anymore for the last 10 years. But how did you build it? I built it by going out and word of mouth. That's how I built the practice. I mean, Beth, Bethany Franco. Bethany Franco would say, oh, God, well, I met this doctor and look what he did and he helped me. And then you'd meet someone else. And, and that's how I did. I went to dinner. I, uh, and someone sitting next to me started talking to me. And, you know, I was much younger then. And, and you, know, you just you talked a lot. Okay, you didn't have a real place. There was no way of spreading the word. People didn't really take ads then. Now you see big, what, big hospitals take an ad on cancer in reduction and, and all the different, you know, heart valve treatments and everything else. It's become a different world. It's a world of not mouth to mouth. It's, it's mouth to mouth through TikTok, through internet, and you, no one knows it better than you. Well, I, a lot of people know it better, but I'm in that world. And I feel like I used to be more, first of all, you're a doctor. So you're in the office all day. You don't have a non-traditional business. You can't screw around at home all day figuring out how to master this. So I feel like it's something that you feel like you have to outsource, not unlike outsourcing having a brand. And it's not something you can spend all day on. And you must feel like, you're you've made a lot you've been successful and you've made a lot of money but you're in the office all day seeing patients so you don't have time to build a brand and a business where the really big big paracone and you know uh dennis gross and that money is and so i want to know a how do you manage does it feel exasperating like you're missing out over here you're not big enough on instagram or tiktok and paracone did that and dennis gross did that and you've had a line. He has Howard has very good skincare. He has very good products, and he has like a glycolic peel that is thirty percent that actually really does burn. You feel the tingle, but not in a way where it is damaging. You have a thirty percent vitamin C serum. Um, the packaging is very sort of medical meets Sephora, which I do like because it's trustworthy. But you know, th- the cosmetics is the land of bullshit, and you're not spending all your time on building this brand because you're still running your business. And that is a hard area to land. And so we're, how do you balance that? And, well, well you, you know, know I, I think I, I did spend a lot of time way back in, in 1992. And that goes way back, you know, DDF. I know a lot of people uh, listening now know what that is. That brand was doctors, dermatology formula that I started at that time. There were no ingredients in products, Bethany. Okay. Even the big companies, Clinique, there were no Essay, what? Atlanta, ingredients? What they, do you mean? There were no active ingredients. We actually put that on the map. And when we put that on the map in 92, we wound up going to 102 SKUs. Way too much. A product line should probably only have 20. But yeah. we, we, every time something came out, we, we made it better. And I did that too with pashminas. You get excited. You get excited, but, th- but that's not necessarily the best thing uh, financially for a business. No. No. Now, we eventually sold it. We almost sold it. It was supposed to be sold to L'Oreal. Instead, they bought SkinCeutical. And then P&G bought us. And then P&G kind of fell on sort of bad times in a way. They sold off a lot of their products. And we wound up being sold to someone else. So I wound up deciding that I, you know, we didn't really get our due on DDF only because everyone copied us. We, we you know, no one, there you was would, no one you there. You peaked too early, but you didn't make the right. Yeah. I remember talking to you and you were torturing yourself. You're a Scorpio. So I get that you were torturing <laughs> yourself. You were very passionate about two roads to go in business. And you don't have to say who they were. You can say that's your choice. But the, this is for people listening who are business people. There were two roads. One, you went P and G, which is the bigger partner that seemed like the shiny objects. And you also had somebody involved in the deal with you. So you felt like if you didn't do it, you weren't being a good partner to the person that came that you were with but like you were going in as Beyonce you were staying with Destiny's Child with a deal for P&G that you didn't think was as good as the other deal to go more on your own and have more freedom and creativity and be able to innovate and and do it that way and your gut was you wanted to go be Beyonce but because of other reasons you went with P&G and you felt that that was a big mistake and then you missed the mark. So t- explain that mistake because well, we've P&G, all done this. P- P&G is a machine and you, you, if you look at their market cap at the time it was 250 uh, you know uh, billion dollars. And and if you look at the market cap of say the other one was Cody, the market cap was like 5 billion. Okay, but what you don't realize or I realize now is that most of that 5 billion was all prestige. 
uh, out of the 250 market cap of P&G, the, the, it was about 15 million that was uh, prestige, you know, skincare. A lot of the other stuff was, oh, you know, you went, shampoos. P&G small, you went with the smaller partner? I went with the small partner. No, oh. I went with the bigger partner, P&G. Oh, okay. No, the P&G, but, but they were a machine. But that machine, you know, broke down to a certain extent. They're, they seem to be back now at P&G. By that time, they sold off $13 billion. Imagine that, $13 billion of their skincare and shampoos and all their luxury items. And then, because P&G was constantly changing with time, different CEOs. And now, finally, they've reached the point where they seem to have, have reached the point where they know what they're doing now from that standpoint of luxury. Remember now, they're a You're big consumer now. company. Now, they're a big consumer company. First of all, you have no idea. You have to really try to get a sense of where that company is. And they're never going to really tell you. I sold Skinny Girl to a company that I did not know, I know now, was gobbling up brands because they wanted to swell themselves up to get bought by Suntory for a multi-billion dollar deal. I wouldn't have known that. So I right. thought I was so special. And they came in and they wanted to buy us and Pinnacle Vodka and all that. Now, if Skinny Girl was today with the numbers we were doing, we would be we would have sold for a billion dollars. Literally, it was, it was, it was, we sold almost a million cases. That's well, because they're doing the, the multiples are so much higher now. But also yeah. it was trend. It's now more trending to do celebrity stuff. I was too early too. like, I, I'm, I'm not complaining and it put me on the map, but I didn't know that they would just want to like grab that brand, then pay no attention to it. And that happens a lot with the bigger partner. The best partners I've ever had are the small, not only the small partners, because I have really good partnership at iHeart, the partnerships that genuinely, and you have to trust and have some faith or go with your gut, are going to let you kind of be you. If they wanted to buy you or be in business with you, they're going to be nimble and like bob and weave. iHeart, I could be like tomorrow, I, I we're going on a spaceship to Mars and it's going to cost this much and you're uncomfortable, but I'm telling you, it'll be the best trip we ever take. Tomorrow, they would pull the spaceship up. And that was what, you know, it was like with my individual partner in Skinny Girl. I would say to him, you shrink wrap a car by tomorrow for filming right. that says Skinny Girl and he would do it because he trusted me. But bigger companies can't make those kind of fast moves. iHeart is an exception. I well, you know, I, I can simplify very easy. What I did is I went with the bigger company, the larger cap company, company I thought I could build it to a billion very quickly. And the other company, Cody, okay, was all about me. They all want, it was, everything was Big about fish, me. The small branding pond. was about me. The name was about me. They wanted me to do everything, the events. P&G, I was the founder, okay? I wasn't really, they didn't have to incorporate me. They incorporated me when they wanted to. You know, so that was the difference. And, and yeah, in retrospect, I would love to have gone because, you know, Cody was very cool. You know, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're out of, uh, you know, Europe and they're just a cool company. And that doesn't mean P&G is not, but P&G is a little more consumer and they're. One they're was Barney's at that time and one was more like going to like, you know, Macy, like it was like bigger. And you were a totally. big fish. You were a small yeah. fish in a big pot. So you fucked, you fucked up and we've all, I've fucked up many times. So you fucked up and. <laughs> You have a, the products that are as good, if not better than what they were. So what what are you going to do now? Well, I, I, I felt that, you know, we missed the boat only because everyone copied us. And some, there were a lot of people who copied us got bought for billions of dollars, li literally billion dollars. Mm -hmm. I believe A couple it. of them, $600 million. I can name them all, but I won't. But they copied what we had. So I, I need to decide to, I need to get back in the game. So I actually developed a patent on, on a vehicle. You know, it's all about, you know, you can name all these ingredients. If they don't get into the skin, what's the use of it? You put it on your skin. The molecule is too big. It doesn't get in. So I developed a patent on a vehicle that any ingredient in a cream that you put it in, like if you put in retinol, you put it in, it absorbs into the skin, stays in the skin longer, becomes time-released, and decreases any irritancy. And that's why we have very high concentrations of, of, of retinol that no one else could have because of my patented formula. So we, went, we got back and Sephora approached me and they asked me to fill a white space. And this was sort of the white space. So we got into Sephora and we're in a whole bunch of different places. And, you know, this is all much more competitive market than when I w was there at 92. I say, we I got it. Yeah, I get it. I'm going back in with wine to a category I created. Right. 
Because like so I, put, I created celebrity cocktail space and I'm going, I'm back in with wine. Like you, you're going back into something that you were at the beginning of, but that's a touching story. No one cares about it. No, you know no, what I mean? I mean we the past is the past. It. It's, it's all about the present. Okay. That's all it is. It's all about the present and, and, and making, you know, making inroads is having great products. But I also find out because I've seen a lot of lousy products out there um, with, with commercials and everything else. And I don't believe a word they say that, you know, instant miracles, you know, mm-hmm. in 24 hours, the skin is filled in. The acne scars are, are, are gone. The wrinkles are gone. I don't believe it. Uh, and I, I there, but there are people that do believe it. And uh, and people are making a lot of money, so it becomes who has more money. Okay, as long as you're not doing any harm to the patient with the product, it becomes about sort of who has more money, really. Who can advertise more? Marketing, no, a hundred percent. There are there's a you know, and some of them are good brands, but it's about the way it's making a person feel. There's a brand I'm thinking of called Drunk Elephant. Everyone was obsessed, and it looks like it's very nice products. Um, there are some, I but the stories behind that, you know, they're, they're very wealthy family behind that you know drunk that, elephant you know, oh yeah yeah you, really? you, huge family yeah uh, i mean uh, yeah i don't i know i think they're they're an oil family i'm not sure i could be i didn't know that. that that's a good piece of it okay what about biologique because i think they have good products some some good products i honestly well, well, do. Well, a lot of these companies have, have been lucky enough or smart enough to to you know get some of the investment guys that that want to get into the market no different than we'll talk about what's happening in the world of dermatology, okay? All investment guys now, I said, oh, investment companies are buying up individual practice, group practices. I, I predict in 10 years, you will not see a single practitioner in New York or even around the country, pretty much. It's like a branded getting, practice. Everything's getting brought up. People, you have approached me, they approach my friends, and they want to buy very often they don't want to buy individual pra- individual practice. Although I've been approached a lot of time, they want to buy um, like a group of five doctors, and, and then they want they're going to buy another group, and they're going to buy several groups. They're going to buy ten different groups, you know. So they have fifty different doctors in maybe ten different places, and then they'll take that and turn it around and sell it to big, some big conglomerate that wants to control them all and grow them even more and advertise. As you can yeah, but see why now, can't you do one of those deals and you go around the country and make sure that each one is up to par? It's like a franchise. Make sure that you're making sure that the quality is good in the franchise. I think actually think that's a good idea. No, it's a great idea. It's, it's all about dollars. Okay, I mean these guys coming in uh, have huge dollars behind them, and they, but their goal is that their, their, their goal is to be the first one in, and then get out and have a bigger guy buy them, and then who knows where they go from there. And that's where it's coming. I, I, I'm I'm amazed that they, you'll see it. You'll see all these little sh- places opening with like shops that you know, do no, Botox. No, I'm saying it's almost fillers. like adjacent to medical spa, like Skinny Spa, or like you see them in the city. You see that on the second floor. These brands you're starting to not realize you're seeing it, but it's these different quote unquote med spas. They're doing Botox. They're doing all this stuff. I agree with you. It happens too where there really aren't that many dentists. I've seen like these like chain teeth cleaning places that also will do your dentistry. And one of them really messed me up. One of them in New York City screwed me up bad. Well, I, I, had, a, I had a patient the other day. She came in, she had one eye closed. And, and I said, what, what, what did you do? And I always did a Botox in the past. Well, I was in the area and I, I hurt my knee. And while I was there, uh, orthopedic doctor. He said, oh, I do Botox now. And he gave her Botox. And she her eyes closed. It's called Tosis. And she... And, and so people are doing that now. They're in uh, offices. I, know, of I had a, um, I had a, a dentist, which is adjacent, do the Botox in the jaw because he's seen what you're talking about. But still, like a dentist, it's not their first thing that they're doing Botox all day. No, and, you know, all the plastic surgeons jumped in and they have nurses in their offices, PAs in their offices. You know, they have a lot of people assisting that, you know, uh, even in my office, you know, after a certain period of time, the nurses you know, and PAs want to do it themselves. They don't want to assist anymore. So that that whole world is changing. And what happens is they wind up going somewhere and getting bought up by some big company that just has a whole bunch of PAs and nurses working at a very, at a much discounted price. You know, we've maintained, hopefully maintain, you know, our practice because, you know, we it, 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 there's quality here and you get something under one roof, but like I don't let someone out without doing a, a medical check on them, making sure they don't have a melanoma or a skin cancer. You know, then we then we go from head to toe, thinning hair, 
varicose veins, you know, um, muscle loss, building up the cheeks, getting rid of fine lines and wrinkles, getting rid of pigmentation. Okay. We're covering, skin and we're covering, skin can, I'm recovering, and I, I can tell you some new lasers. Well, if we have time here, hopefully, that we just got in the last two weeks, believe it or not. And they're exciting things happening all the time. Some of the lasers, you got to be careful. You know, an, another laser comes out every other week, and you got to pick and choose because a lot of them are the same. What is all this stuff and what do we really need in your opinion? Okay, so I've heard of there's there's and and y- people buy these serum. Serum is the most overused pro- like everybody has a serum and they all do something different. So vitamin C serum, vitamin B serum, glycolic serum, retinol, niacin, peptides, matrixol. Like let's be I know it's different for everybody but I, I've been doing this a long time now, re- looking at all this stuff, and I'm still confused. So can you, collagen, can you try to help me understand um, what is for what? So like then there are ones that say like for brightness and reduces discoloration, and I think those are also vitamin C. I'm a woman in the drugstore. So I have been told a long time ago, and I stick by it, that I would do vitamin serum in the, C serum in the morning, and if you want like either a glycolic or a retinol or something peeling at night, okay. or if you're dehydrated, put this on, like, tell me about this oh, functional well, okay. serum. If I want, if I, you're coming to my office. What am I going to you? Okay. Uh, that's what you're asking. Okay. Or, or everyone, what does a person do? They're in the drug. So they want to try this serum. They heard about nine. Well, every, okay. Well, I'll tell you that, that everyone should use a retinol. Okay. Ret- retinol is tried and, and true. It's the only real product that has been held up truly to decrease fine lines and wrinkles in so many, so many studies, thousands of tough studies. So you, a retinol, and the question is what concentration? We have a high concentration, but, but long, long as you use a retinol at night, and question is, should you use a retinol every day? Okay, I think retinol is a great product. I think you start out every other day, but I like to intersperse it with niacinamide. A lot of people have not heard of niacinamide. Niacinamide is B3. It helps keep water in the skin. I didn't know. That's skin. the same thing. So if it says a B3 serum. B3 serum, yeah, and my niacin are exact same thing. Okay. Okay. So I alternate it because retinol increases collagen production. It increases uh, elastin production. It also helps tighten the skin. Okay. It also he- helps blood flow to the skin as well. So you get that rosy glow. Then the niacinamide helps, uh, you know, the barrier of our skin. Water gets out, pollutants get in. As we get older, it becomes like cottage cheese. The B3, a niacinamide, actually, actually repairs that barrier. So it almost sews up the little holes. Okay, so now that's a good water okay. stays in and the pollutants then don't get out and you get more of a plumper skin. It also helps with pore size as well. Okay, which Minimizing is amazing. Minimizing pores. Minimizing okay. pores. Nothing else does it other than that, I think, niacinamide. So I have someone alternate that. Now, because we have high concentrations, and they this is specific maybe for soluble skin, I use it with ni- um, biohyaluronic acid. Biohyaluronic acid, as you know, is one of the best moisturizers. A skin is made up of uh, hyaluronic acid. It helps keep water in the skin as yes. you get older. A skin becomes less plump. I mean, it becomes uh, sunken in. So I haven't put the retinol on, the biocinamide on, excuse me, hyaluronic on, and then niacinamide, and then biohyaluronic. They Not alternate on the same days. night. Alternate days. Oh, right. Alternate. So the nights of the retinol are the hyaluronic, and the nights that are off are the niacinamide. No. The retinol, niacinamide. It's your retinol, biohyaluronic, right after. Next day, Okay, Why did you add biohyaluronic? Is that the same thing as hyaluronic? It's yeah, it's the same thing as hyaluronic. That's, that's our name, but we use we, in ours. It's hyaluron, which is a small molecule of the hyaluronic acid, so it actually gets into the skin. Sometimes All right, so the hyaluronic night of the retinol. Doesn't. Yet the night of the retinol is the hyaluronic. You said yes. You do it, right. but you're using the biohyaluronic both nights. Just oh, you, and then the other night is is the niacinamide and the hyaluronic. Okay. That's exactly. I'm sorry. And you. what about the day? Do you agree with the vitamin C serum in the day? Totally, totally. Vitamin C uh, builds collagen. One of the best builders of collagen. It also which helps fine lines and wrinkles and elastin production. And the key to it, it actually decreases pigmentation and helps with brightness of the skin. Okay. 
So what about now when you have a product, it's like the pads that are glycolic toning pads or exfoliating pads, those pads. I use those a couple of times a week during the day and they seem to like clean the skin also and they're not too harsh and then moisturize after with SPF and some of them are stronger and you could use those at night Are you using those not with retinol they're instead of correct or an alternate well you alternate you're not using it with it you're alternating of course uh, but why would one and, choose the retinol and not those pads why would one choose one or the other well glycolic acid okay as we age uh, our skin cells stick together almost like a glue like substance okay so the glycolic acid actually unglues those dead skin cells so those dead skin cells that are sitting on top of the skin making your skin look yellow and rough yes okay, and as you age, it doesn't, you don't slough off those skin cells as readily. So the glycolic acid breaks up the glue in between the cells. And when you wash your face, it sloughed off. It's exfoliating. Okay, so it exfoliating, yeah. I didn't know it's, that retinol didn't exfoliate. I didn't know that. I thought Well, that that retinol was like does, num- does that as well. But over a period of time, glycolic acid works a little quicker to unglue those, 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 uh, that glue-like substance between the cells. They so you can combine, and then and then a scrub is like another version of doing that on your own. It's like manual. Well, a doing scrub it. is a physical version of that, right? It, 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 That's it's, what I'm saying. A washcloth is an exfoliant, I think, exfoliator. Well, absolutely. It depends how okay. rough it is, right? Okay, yeah. but but th- there's no the confusion here is you keep hearing collagen, uh, increasing collagen, increasing elastin, decreasing fine lines and wrinkles. A lot of these products work in conjunction with each other. And your question is a great question, but there is, other than maybe the retinol, there is no one product that should be used by itself. I think- No, I use, agree. If the layer, conjun- you, yeah, I agree. But not, but, but what, the worst thing in my office in terms of patients coming in, mm-hmm. they think more is better. That doesn't mean you take a retinol, then you put a glycolic on top of it, and then you put a niacinamide on top no. of it. And you, I, but people do that. They think more is better, you know, and, and it's not. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's. I agree. I think that it's like cooking and you have to, or, and you have to, or eating, you have to know your body. So if I'm an Aspen, I'm not going to start doing a ton of like drying exfoliators because I know that my skin's already tightening because it's freezing out and it's so dry. So that's a place where you might do like a warm washcloth to exfoliate a little bit and then absorb the products by layering like a serum or a face oil and then a moisturizer, but be go easy. If you're in Florida and your face is sweating at night, you might do a scrub because you've had SPF on and sweat. Like people have to start thinking the way that they think about how they're eating or what their body wants. People treat their skin like it's either a one size fits all or they just tell me what to do and every day I'm doing that. And people don't know like my face needs a moisturizing mask or my face needs a detox mask. Like you got to kind of get in tune with your own face. Well, the average person, you know a lot because you're doing a lot with skincare all the time. But the average person can't go to the drugstore necessarily and do it right. I mean, they should talk to the dermatologist and get a program and stick to that program. Okay, because if they go to the drugstore and buy something, some of it will be right, some of it won't be right, and they'll get a whole mixture of things that may counter the other. So I think it's important to get a real program and just stick to it. It's very easy. Go to your dermatologist and, and, and just, just let them write on a piece of paper. What do you do at night? What do you do in the day? What do you do if, when you're in the sun? And also, remember, on vitamin C, because you're on retinol, you have to use a, a, a sunblock. Sunblock always goes last, by the way. It's the last thing you put on. Mm-hmm. So you should know oh, that. Oh, good question. So what about there's an SPF 30 moisturizer? There's an SPF 30 skin tint, like a foundation. There's an right. SPF 30 serum. There's a glowy serum SPF. So, And there's a powder that has SPF. So my feeling is how are you going? And then there's a spray to put on the top. It's a setting spray because then later in the day you could touch it up. How do you really believe people should be doing their SPF? I mean, that's obviously individual. I mean, I, 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 nothing, you don't need more than 30. 30 blocks, you know, the sun rays by 97%. If you get a 50, it's 98. If you go all the way to almost 100%, you, 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 what's the difference? 97 versus 98, 98, 99. So that's all you need is a 30. Because when you start getting past the 30, it's not, it's, it's cosmetically elegant. It's very hard to get a 50 or a 60. So just use a 30. If the key is how often you apply it. You've got yes. to apply it in the, in the sun. People don't realize that. And yep. SPF was, was the guidelines 
were by putting it on every two hours if you're in the sun. And that will give you an SPF of 30. If you put it on and you wait five, six hours, it's no longer an SPF of 30 anymore. What about mineral sunscreen? People always say, oh, but it's not mineral, so it doesn't count, or it's not, what is that? Well, I, I like mineral as well, because you know, it's, you know, it's as opposed to chemicals. Some people have reactions to chemical sunscreens. They don't act as quickly when you put it on. Uh, it takes about a half hour to, to, to work. The mineral or physical sunscreen, they work instantly. And, oh. and, and that's why, and that's why okay. people sort of like that and less chance of irritation or allergic reaction. Wow, I'm lear- this is good. Okay, great. So let's go into like things that I've heard about and then you'll tell me things I haven't heard about. Okay, you've told me that the straight, let's go through like procedures that I just hear about in the, in the, in the ether. So what, hydrofacial, bullshit or not no, bullshit? No, not, not at all. A hydrofacial actually gets rid of the sebum and oil that's in the skin uh, well, in, the, in the sebaceous gland, and that sebaceous gland gets clogged up with with bacteria, with sebum, which is oil, and debris, dead skin cells, and that's what causes a zit. That becomes a cyst but I think or a it's, pimple. I've had them, and I think it's kind of BS. Like if you have underneath stuff, it needs to be like like gotten excavated. I feel I feel like that's a she she bullshit facial to me. Well, no, what we do here very often, we, we do actually a real poor cleanser cleaning with the facialist and then a hydrofacial. Or you could do it the other way around. You do a hydrofacial to loosen everything, and then she does a real facial in terms of getting out some of the sebum and the pus and everything else that's clogs your pores, comedomes, blackheads. So you can Comedomes do it either those way. Little bumps that like teens get. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll split the difference with you on that. I'm not, I'm, I'm a more hardcore facial person than that. What about. So, so, so do them both together. That's okay. All. What about where are you on microdermabrasion? Yeah. My, microdermabrasion is, is almost a thing of the past. Okay. I mean, you're, you're dating yourself. Um, I don't think it's done that much anymore. Because we I have think, these, see, I love it. I still think it's great. I think it's I the know because it's simple, it's easy, and and but we no, have so many. But we have these incredible, you know, newer, better lasers now that work better than micro uh, dermabrasion. Yeah, micro dermabrasion is a great, good, you know, buff puff. You know, it gets it gets rid of the dead skin cells really quickly. You refresh and you glow for you know for a couple of days. I'm not. We have it here. We do it, but not as often because those people that want it, you know. We'll get sometimes a clear and brilliant. There are, uh, there are I whole think other- micro is better than a clear and brilliant. I've had them both. I really do. Better than a chemical peel, like a quick chemical. I think. I think the actual sloughing and buffing, I think, is more effective to get the shit off the top of the surface. That's what I really think, doing this for like 30 years. All of it. Yeah, no, it also depends on skin type. You know, there are p- sensitive skin types that cannot do a microdermabrasion. Okay. They get Fair. too red and irritated. They have broken blood vessels. The blood okay. vessels get broken. No, and don't listen. We we do it here, okay? Yeah, and we've no, been no, doing no. it for just, twenty years. But but we, I just have. I think I have so many other things now that are. I hate to say better, but work in conjunction better than just a microdermabrasion by itself. Okay, so the clear and brilliant. Let's go through. We're going to go after to the plastic surgery. The clear and brilliant, from my perspective, if you get like a CO two peel or a Fraxel. It's like you're down for seven days. You look like yeah. a monster. Your face is right. peeling off. And my personal feeling, which doesn't mean it's right, is that your skin is such baby after that if you even walk near the window, the brown spots fly in faster and it scares me versus like CO2, which is like a slow and low. Like you do it. And if you do a couple in a row, you're getting not the same effect, but it's not as harsh. And I think that's better. What do you think? Well, that, that's interesting what you said because CO two in general is is a much more aggressive uh, peel or, mm-hmm. or a laser. Okay, I we just bought a laser last week called the Helix laser, which I'm really excited about because what it does is it actually takes over for the Fraxel and takes over for the CO two. You could actually if most people want Fraxel and want for pigmentation, get rid of pigmentation, precancers, yes. clean up this. Okay, uh, people want CO two want a, if they want a deep one, but real deep lines for acne scars, for like you really a, a, a need it, like real you really deep need pigmentation. It. Yes. So, but what this laser does, which is really exciting me, and we haven't done a huge amount yet because we only got it last week, and I've done about six people already that are thrilled, 
is it combines CO2 and it causes non-ablative uh, laser, fractional laser. So you're combining actually two modalities together. So if you want to tone it, I like actually tune it down very low where you want to get rid of the wrinkles and the pigmentation and, and you don't want a lot of downtime because it doesn't heat up. The spot size is smaller and mm-hmm. the spread is smaller. So it actually lets you heal quicker than a normal CO2. But you have the non-ablative laser that goes what does deep down. Mean? Non-ablative means that you don't peel from it. Okay, you don't get no any scabby. It's okay. just a heat. And that heat heats down the dermis, okay, and acts in conjunction with the CO2. So you don't get the downtime you would get from a normal CO2, but more of the effect that than you would ever get with a CO2, the old CO2s. So and more you get of an zero effect. downtime. Like, do you need sometimes you need with nah, even clear and brilliant? No you got to plan like three days. There's no such thing as zero time. time. Someone tells you zero right. downtime, run away because you're not going to get any result. That's okay? what I agree. I'm, I'm talking okay. about three, three to five, you know, days. And I'm going to do that. Bed. I'm going to do, do that. You could do. You could also get dial down to just a cool peel and a cool peel. You just that's red. what I heard about. Tell me about a cool peel. That was my next question. Well, we had a cool peel and, and we actually got rid of cool peel for this laser helix because. It's the cool peels is incorporated into this laser. Okay, it's, well, a, it's okay, the same the company. Cool, so that okay, a cool peel. Okay, wait, I'm excited. So you're cool peel would be this. equivalent of cool peel would be equivalent of your buff puff. Okay, of just cleaning up the skin, getting rid of dead skin on the cell on, on top of the skin, and you would have a, a minimum of redness overnight. Okay, and no downtime. Yeah. Then, okay. Then you dial that same laser up, and you go deeper as de- deep as you want. But the additive ablative makes it heats up the skin and you're getting a synergistic effect. I know it's very hard to comprehend this talking to you. No, now it's okay. You're doing, this, a, you're, doing, not a, you're doing a decent job. You're saying they complement each other. Um, and we but didn't it's have like that not before. as extreme. And it's, to, it's to give that person extreme results without extreme downtime. Okay. And what about like some places just have the chemical peel where they put something over your skin, it's almost like a chemical solution and it's an, it feels tingly, but it's not crazy. Like what, what, that's yeah, just I, I mean, it's mostly glycolic acid that, you know, that, you know, years ago we used to use phenol, but no glycolic acid. It's, it's a nice little, you know, feel good thing. I think we have all these other things in, in our, our mentor that we could, we could, we don't need it. I can't okay. say we don't need a peel. People come in and they say, I only want a peel. I'm used to a peel. Please give me a TCA trichloric acetic acid peel they go in they get out it takes 10 minutes your faces sloughs off the dead skin skin cells for probably uh, two or three days and they feel refreshed i i feel like i have other things i could offer them but then they insist they want to peel so far so be it we give them peel okay now let's get into filler because so i've done botox with you years ago we did filler one time uh, I forgot what it was called. Wrestling. Is that what? The, yeah, sure, and, yeah. and I've had people like make up all these stories Like you can verify and you're allowed. I'm giving you the right. permission to say that I have not been a filler person. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but a lot of people and a lot of plastic surgeons really don't think it's a great solution. Like that filler is not great. That m- most plastic surgeons don't want to alienate their dermatologist because they're referring business back and forth. But that I've heard of, don't think filler is a great solution by overall. Well, it really depends what you're trying to, you know, uh, if you're looking at your face and you've lost the volume in your face and your face is sunken in and you're not lucky enough to have high cheekbones like you do and a really great jawline, okay, putting a filler in and raising the cheek area, giving it a more defined area. Mm. At the same time, when you do that, you lift and you get rid of this nasal labial. Notice the line here? from the nose to the mouth, that yeah. gets deeper. It gets deeper because what happens, your cheek has descended. And if you would lift that up with a little oh, filler, sk- yeah. then all of a sudden you get rid of that line and you've given someone a cheekbone where now they can put makeup on and, uh-huh. and, and have a defined area. Where the plastic surgeons are against it, if you have s- skin that's loose and hanging, okay, especially on the neck, it, it, it Phil is not going to do very much. Okay, oh, for that. I understand. That's a good, good. You're good, Howard. This is good. Very, very educated. Yes, I, mm-hmm. I understand. And you're saying like the thing that I find interesting is that p- 
people get people say things like that about the filler, but it's like, yeah, you know what? Aging sucks too, but here we are. Like you're not you're not a magician. You're saying I, I'm going to help you solve some concave issues in your face. This is what I have. A plastic surgeon has other shit, and then still you guys aren't magicians. And I've and I I don't I want to support women, so I really want to say this in a constructive way. When and just like that came out that show that the follow up for Sex in the City, the women's faces looked like it's okay to get get work and get filler or whatever. It looked like either bad work or desperation. And I think it kind of age, like looking aged can often be better than looking strange and fucked up. Like Paul, a man notices it more than women. Paul, like that, her face is fucked up. Like he doesn't know what he's even saying or what it could be, but he just will say, not meaning he, 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 you know, has a mother who's, you know, an, you know, an older woman and she hasn't had plastic surgery. And so he know he has no problem with age. He will just look at someone and say like, what is that? And I'll be like, I think it's, you know, either bad or too much or not balanced. And it's being said about the morning show. Well, when you have a facelift, okay, you can pull the skin as taut as you want. But if you don't have the fat underneath or the collagen or elastin underneath the skin to hold that up, you're going to look gaunt. You're going to look like you got caught in a wind tunnel. So after you have a facelift, you very often need filler. That filler could be hyaluronic acid, wrestling, juvederm. It could be even fat. Okay, there's a lot of other fillers. There's something called sculpture that also that builds collagen. There's so many different things. But the key to what you're asking here is you have to just be a better version of yourself. You can't try to bring your face back, you know, when you're 50 and used to be on TV at 30. You're not going to bring it back to 30. And if you try no. to bring it back to 30, you're going to look like a cabbage patch doll. That's what, that's what I'm saying. But how do about. these doctors okay. do this? They must be expensive doctors. These women are rich, really rich. So how does well, this, where does that disconnect? Some of the doctors will, you know, patients want it and they give it to them. It's sometimes very hard to say to somebody that's, and they're very, you know, I mean, it's very, very, very hard. But someone insists on, I want more. I want more. I want to look like my friend. I said, well, your friend looks a little freaky, you know, and then the friend gets a little annoyed because you got to be careful. You don't offend yeah. her. And, yeah. and, and people, and you don't want people to walk, you don't even want to walk into a restaurant and say, you want someone to say, wow, she looks really great. You don't want someone to say, oh my God, look all the work she had done. Yeah, he no, did. But also, there are nice, advertisements nice- for you, so it's fucked up. Like, whoever did the work on these shows that people are criticizing, it's not a great indicator. So, what do you do? You say no? No, you say no. Okay, but they're going to go to someone else. You know that. So, what so do you, a fine yeah, and then, cry. you try yeah. to talk it somewhere in between what you want and what they want and try to meet in the middle and you're not going to give them that so-called cabbage patch look that, that we all hate, you know, that, that sometimes it puts so much fill in, their eyes close, you know, and they look lumpy and bumpy in certain lights and one side is higher than the other side because it's hard to make it symmetrical. I mean, there, there's, there, less is more and you do it in small increments. That's what I believe in. And what about the lips? Like, so we want the, the people are getting, there's a young influencer, she's 20 something, and she was very honest about like putting yeah. filler in the lips. Is that filler that's lasting forever? Isn't there no. one that's like forever? No, I, no I, I happen to love, it's controversial, Barbie. I love silicone. I think it's one of the few areas, micro, micro droplets of silicone that are, that are pure grade silicone, you know, medical grade silicone, you don't have any reaction to those and you put small little droplets along the borderline and one in two treatments, it's done. I saw a girl the other day. And you never come back. No, I did her lips, but also she had her nose done and she had two little dimples in her nose here and here. You've seen that sucked in look here. I put a drop of silicone. It literally took two minutes and two minutes and all of a sudden she didn't have to have a nose repaired again. She hated Stop. that sunken. That's like your jaw move. I haven't heard that before. That's a move. Well, because people are afraid of silicone because it's permanent, which means you've got to do a really good job because if permanent is good because it's permanent, permanent is bad because it's permanent. Because if well, you so make how a mistake, did you get it out? You're saying that's Lisa Rinna lips. When she did her lips, she did silicone. Because it was I don't forever. know what she did. I don't know what she did. But but uh, well, that would be a lot of maintenance if she had to keep keeping them the way that she did it. That she has would to be have like, to do it every four or five months if she to, to keep it up. Wow. And wow. And can you, it's a really subtle difference, the silicone. I would like some juice. No, no, with the silicone, you just do, I, I can tell you some of your friends that I've done and, it, and it's 
10 years ago and, and it's held. And they usually you need one or two. It depends on oh, your lips. Yeah. You have good lips, so you need, you need maybe I one. I have good lips. Okay. I'm looking for now your lips look good. So I don't need it. I don't know what you did to it. Maybe maybe you... Uh, I didn't know. I, ha- I I would like the silicone in the lips. I think I like you have a nice lips. shaped lips. Yeah, right, you, would have great, you have great lips. But some Save people come with, with almost no lips. Skinny, yes. skinny, skinny lips. Those yeah. I may have to do four or five treatments on. But we do it slowly. So no, they never walk in and say, oh my God, what did you do to me? Okay, mm, that doesn't happen okay. because I never give them that much. When you do the ones that absorb, you do, you can give them a lot. And it goes down in a couple of days, a lot of it, and disappears in three or four months. And if they hate it, you can actually dissolve it. So, okay, so so you also do lipo, which we'll get into in one second, and then I'll let you go soon. But the other thing is, I heard that, I thought that, the I never knew that BBL was a Brazilian butt lift. I just, someone, I didn't know that that's what that stood for. But pe- that looks like something you just go in somewhere, they inject something in your ass, yeah. you come out and you look Brazilian. But apparently no, it's no, very no, no, dangerous no. and no, serious. It's very dangerous and m- most guys are not doing that most physicians are not doing Brazilian butt lifts it's 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 a dangerous procedure I'm, there are some people it may be in great hands they they do it well but that's not something I'm ever going to recommend to somebody I think it, there's been too many there's been you know actually reported deaths with that I've uh, heard I didn't know that yeah. sounds to me like just like going to get your boobs done I heard it's not like that it's very serious no that's no, no it, it's totally not that and a lot of people who did it before are, dr- are not doing it now wow and then you so, think that like that's the Kardashians. The butts are definitely like Brazilian butt lifts. What else would there be? I, I, well, I don't know what else it, it could pro- possibly be, you know, putting sculpture in and keep, you'd have to keep putting it in every six months and, and building it up that way. There are ways of building up a buttocks besides that. But so it's hard for me to tell you what they actually had, but obviously but something they, has, you have to do something. Something's either being doing continuously or, or it stays. Okay. And have you noticed a difference? So I heard an article that, the food supply in this country, it's a fe- Ozempic is affecting what's going on at supermarkets. So people are right. purchasing 30% less food. It makes sense. I would have never thought of this, but like 30% less food because of Ozempic. Now I'm seeing these housewives, not some, I'm seeing housewives, former housewives. They don't even look like themselves. They look almost like little children. Like I'm thin and I know that, but I've always right. been thin. So it sort of like works on me like right. i'm either a couple right. of pounds heavier a couple of pounds thinner i don't know if it's just my eye seeing it or if it's actually strange and unnatural like previously somewhat thin people or maybe they were like you know a size that was totally reasonable not overweight and now they look like they're like young children it looks bizarre to me and i don't i don't i want to know if that's affecting you and like well, lipo they, and plastic yeah, surgery they, and tummy they look, tucks they look they look emaciated okay that's the word okay and and they don't look like themselves but sometimes they're thin in the body and they look gaunt in the face so when they come in i kind of fix their face up meaning mm. i give them a little I, I plump up their skin and give them a little more definition around the jawline because all of a sudden everything starts to hang you yeah, know it's you, you know, oh yeah yeah you, you, I mean, you, lo- you you start losing the uh, structure that your skin hangs on, and skin becomes very, very loose, and really just hangs. It's and, drastic. And- if your body's been in the same body for 50 years, and then you decide to like have drastic 25-pound weight loss, there's going to be something. That's so true. You know, most people uh, in the er- earlier years, like, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, it's the neck that goes, okay? And I think I once told you about, I'm excited about a new procedure we just have now. It's called My Elevate. It's a very simple procedure. Do you ever see the bands on your neck here? Yeah. yeah you just have, I, I have. I have to, yeah. I got to get it done. And you have them a little. So it's a little suture that goes across, comes across here, and it cuts the bands. And the bands go up and bands go down. You, and you go around with the suture underneath the skin. You, you tie do it. it? The skin tie. Yeah, of course. It's beautiful. It's an hour procedure. So Stop. instead of getting cut, uh, your neck, you know, whole neck here and get cut it here and to pull your neck back. And you, and, and that's, you know, it's a, it's a major surgery. This is a local anesthesia. Wow. This is suture that cuts the skin. It's a, uh, I don't know the brochure here, but it's. My Elevate. My Elevate, a little piece of tape here for three days. And it gets rid of the bands and it tightens the skin underneath. It doesn't do anything for the jawline. Mm-hmm. It's the skin underneath your neck. And wow. what you do is I, I do it with liposuction. So I will do that, and I'll liposuction the jawline as well, and any huh. fat in the neck. And you do that combination together, 
And we sometimes will do that with the Vavachi, which is a laser that tightens the skin as well. So you do all three at the same time, and you get a tight neck. And basically, it's surgery, but it's it's under local anesthesia. It's called my That's, Okay. And then and you guys do, I, I did M sculpt, but you have to stick to it. I did it once or twice. And like, it squeezes your stomach and it squeezes your butt. It's like it's doing the push-ups for you. Yeah, well, it, it, it's a, you know it's a, you know it's an easy way out of going to the gym but it's also gets you going once you see some results you go to the gym because i know when I, when I don't go to the gym i don't go to the gym when i start going to the gym i don't want to miss the gym yeah yeah and well, this, I don't gives you a I this gives you a jump gym. start this gives you a jump start okay and then i don't go but that thing yeah i've been on that thing but it's 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 literally a pain in the ass wow um and then last but probably not least the strings, you're, I know that you're against those strings that make people like look cold uh, well, and weird. I, I, I'm, I've never been a thread guy, you know, taking those uh, strings and throwing them across the cheek line or jaw line. And, and it, they don't last. They have a tendency they don't last. to stuff. No, they last about three, four months. That's it. Because if you notice when the per- people put the string in, they also give you filler. Very rarely does someone do string without doing filler. And it's really the filler that does most of the job. The string is like a little additive thing. Like a and, uh, and I know I've seen too many people where they have the string and the string you know, has a tendency to poke out over a period of time. It looks like it comes, it pokes out like a splinter. What? Um, how do you get yeah, it in? It, it depends how it's put in. Of course, not it doesn't happen to everybody, but I've seen enough people where that happens. Or oh, if someone goes like this with their, their hand and the strings mm. across here, the string pops. Okay. Wow. So, so you, you know the string, even though it adheres, uh, it, it as you go like this, it's easy to pop. How okay, do so they get it in? How do they get it get it in or get it out? How do you get the string in and out? What it's like? Oh, the string is big, it's just a little opening with a little local anesthesia, and you, and you stick the string in, and you th- you thread it through the through the area you want to go, and then, and then you push down, and it, and it, it has a locking mechanism. What? Okay. And, and then you pull on it, and it tightens the skin. It tightens it because it, it locks in underneath your skin. So when do you have almost the time like, to study all this while like you're barbed working? Wire. It's almost like barbed wire. It, okay. it, it, it goes underneath the skin and locks in. But it, it, it can it could break. But more importantly, I, I, I find that it just doesn't last that long. We do uh-huh. it. If someone pushes me to do it, I'll do it. But I also do it with filler. And I'll do it with all the other things I like to do with some of the lasers and the tightening. Not just thread alone yeah but the right. one thing i do thread alone is the one i just said the my elevate is also a thread but it's it's a polyester braided thread that lasts indefinite there's no reaction to it it goes underneath the skin and seven years later i like that you later, like things that there. just you don't have to do again like you like you want to do silicone properly so you don't have to do it again. i like that I, I i agree with that i don't want to go in I, I don't i got my hair cut and colored for the first time like with intention in five years, like to go to somebody and be like, hi, somebody, what are we going to do today? Like, it's just been drive by trims or coloring it myself. It was a disaster. Right. So I'm a, I like to rather do go do something and it's going to last for a really long time. How do you have time to study all this science when you're working in the office? I mean, I mean, obviously there's weekends and, and that's my time on Mondays. My time on Mondays is to put together all the different, you know, lasers that come out, the different procedures that come out and go through the journals and just making sure that, that I'm up to date. You know, it's, it's easy in this world and things are moving so fast, especially technology wise, that you, you've got to be up on it. Okay. You, know, you are, be- I will say, I always say that to people. You're like, listen, you play basketball, you got a cool son, whatever you go out and you're out about town and all the cool restaurants. You're like a skin dork. You really are. You go to those conferences, those like boring medical conferences and learn all that stuff. Like I do think, and you're not into all the gimmicks, which I do like some gimmicks cause you gotta be into some gimmicks and you gotta, you can't be like, you know, have a simple, you know, what's it called placard on the door. But I feel like you're ba- based in science and you do study a lot. Well, you know, I, I, I think we've been ahead of the game, like liposuction. I was one of the first guys in 1985 to do liposuction. You know, we have an accredited operating room, so it's safe. And, um, you know, of course, the skincare line was one of the first. And I think pretty much every laser that comes out, we get it right at the beginning. And that's good and bad, because when you get a laser in the beginning, 
you're also testing it out, even though the yeah. company tests it out, but you're testing it out in your own hands yeah. until you become familiar. And then when you come, become familiar, that same laser works so much better for you later on because yeah. you, you, have, you have learned how to use it, okay? It's like getting yep. into a car. Okay, yep. so. Well, I think you're great. I've always liked you. I met you years ago and I'm not in the city all the time, but when I am in Ken, you're the only like dermatologist that I have, you know, that's like a re- unless it's like, can someone come over to the house and uh, do the Botox for the jaw, which I don't always love. Uh, I think you're, you're, you're good. I think it's not easy to stay ahead of it. I think you're doing a good job and I think your products are really, really good. And I have to say that my daughter was, I don't want to talk about her that much with this, but she was experiencing some skin issues as a girl her age does. And it was right before back to school. And like she was, had been in camp and had like this terrible thing happen from this dirty room. And I was apoplectic and it was two days before school. And I called Howard. He was home in his house in the Hamptons. And I'm like, we have to come over. He was, his son was there. I was like, this is an emergency. Like, we have to come over. And you were like wearing normal clothes. I had this like toolkit <laughs> that I literally bought myself at a drugstore. And you really helped her out. And she really likes you. And, you know, you're a good dad. And she liked coming in and like being like, well, no, do- I want to go to Dr. Soba. I-, I have his products. And she's got your Cleosin in the fridge. Yeah, she's a good and girl. And so like, she's so nice as my kid. She's a good girl. You know, I wanted to mention, because you and I talked about it uh, uh, with, with COVID. Uh, a lot of people, 30% of people that have COVID have been having lo- hair loss problems and over a real wow. long period of time. And uh, the only real answer for that was no real answer for hair loss was, is, was, you know, doing PRP where you take the blood from someone's vein and then you spin it down, you get the plasma and the plasma has a growth factors. That was so painful. And I did it on my own scalp several times. So it was very uh-huh. painful and, and it works. It slows down the hair loss. It increases the diameter of the hair. When you get regrowth, it's questionable. Mm-hmm. But the company just came out oh, about six months ago. We have the first machine. It's called Alma Ted, T-E-D. And the, what it does is it actually, you get the growth factors from the company that you would automatically get from your plasma. You put it on the scalp, and by ultrasound, it delivers the product into the scalp, into the hair follicle, and you're, sh- you're getting the same results that you see with PRP, which That's means amazing. decreased hair loss, Increasing the diameter of the hair, and we also we, what we also do is um, give you a topical as well. Different topical for female. I like that. Different That's good. No, male. I definitely women. I I have thin hair. I love that. And we'll talk it about works another better time. On women than men because women have a tendency just to thin out in the front. Uh-huh. And when the light shines on the head, you can see the scalp. Oh, I don't, that's this not that bad for me. Mine's just right here. Yeah, this thickens um, the diameter, so it it it, it looks full, but also okay. decreases hair loss. No, nope, twenty minutes, and it doesn't hurt. So All right, that's I'm into key. that. And another time, we'll talk about like what your perceived other reactions to the vaccine. Not getting in, like not that you're being political, but I have seen a lot of different stuff in my own life and looked online and right. this was amazing. Uh, I don't know that I have your retinol. I need to get it now that you were so. Please, yeah. Well, send it. Call Carol. She'll send it to you. Awesome. This was really good. Like really great. Oh, where can they get your products? That's what I wanted to know. Where can they get your okay. products? Well, they can order from my office or, so or they can the, order on Sephora.com. Sephora, Sephora.com would probably be the easiest. Sephora.com. They love Sephora. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. That, that'd be easy. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.